Hello, I'm Professor Liu. Welcome to our live stream. I'm here today with art prof teaching artist Jordan McCracken Foster. Today we are doing a crit clash on artist Shepard Ferry. If you would like to grow as an artist, but you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. Here's how Crit Clash works. We assign a point of view to each of us. For example, today, Jordan is going to argue against Shepherd Fairy. I am going to argue for Shepherd Fairy. What we say during this debate may not be what Jordan and I actually believe in real life. We've all been working on our acting skills here at Art Prof. We've been getting better. So hopefully we're making it tougher and tougher for you guys to figure out what we actually believe. And we will reveal later on Discord after the stream what we actually think about Shepherd Fairy. And after the debate, you guys get to decide who won the Crit Clash. Okay, let's get started by introducing Shepard Fairey because I think a lot of people may not know his actual name, but I think certainly the images that he's done have been all over the place. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the Obama Hope poster that Shepard Fairey did, and we'll take a look at actually some of the new work he's been doing in reaction to the global pandemic. Jordan, what was your first exposure to Shepard Fairey's artwork? Um, so I actually saw the art before I learned his name. Um, and I, it was the Obama poster, uh, the Hope poster that we just mentioned. And uh, I just kept seeing that all over the place. I grew up in LA and I was you know, in middle school and everyone just had that around and they were posting pictures all over the school. So I became very familiar with that poster. Yeah, and that's so different than me because Shepard Fairey, I think is about, I don't know, five or six years older than me. And he went to the same art school that I went to, which was RISD. And actually one of my former professors who is now my colleague was Shepard Fairey's teacher. And I believe gave some assignment that had to do with his first real big campaign as an artist, which was the Andre the Giant has a posse sticker campaign, which we will get into in a little bit. And so I really feel like I've watched Shepard Fairey's career develop from the Andre the Giant to what he's doing now. And so it's a very different point of view, I think, just based on our ages being so different. So if you guys don't know anything about Shepard Fairey as a person, he's a lot of things. He is a street artist. He has worked as a graphic designer. He makes murals. He's an activist and he's a very prolific person. He's done stuff with t-shirts and silk screening and sticker campaigns. And he really is a jack of all trades in terms of putting his artwork out there in a lot of different ways. And he's had bona fide museum shows. He's had solo exhibitions at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, at the Smithsonian Museum, at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. So a lot of stuff has been by him all over the place. Now, here's the thing about the Obama poster, though. I don't know if you guys know this, but there actually was a lot of controversy about it because the Associated Press had a photographer named Manny Garcia who shot this photograph of Obama that you guys can see right now on the left-hand side. And it turned out, actually, that there was a lawsuit where they were saying that, oh, Shepard Ferry did not have permission to use this as a reference for the Hope poster. And there was this whole thing about it. You guys can look it up later. It's more complicated than what I can get into right now. But the end of the story is they decided that probably Shepard Ferry was going to lose because they said he didn't have the right to use it. And they ended up settling with the Associated Press. So he's not an artist who has been without controversy. Not only for that, but he also was arrested in 2009 for graffiti on the way to his ICA museum exhibition. So he's definitely somebody who I think people think about more about him as opposed to just the artwork. I think some artists, the artist is sort of invisible, but he's not. He's somebody who I think is more visible because of all these things that keep happening with the lawsuits and the arrests and all that type of thing. All right. 
let's get started with, oh, I forgot to tell you guys about the Andre the Giant thing. Let's walk back a little bit because you do need to know a little bit about this, okay? So the Andre the Giant, you guys will notice if you go to Shepherd Fairy's website, it's obeygiant.com. And that comes from the sticker campaign where he basically plastered all these places with these stickers that said Andre the Giant has a posse. Now, if you don't know who Andre the Giant is, he was actually this huge wrestler in the 70s. He was very, very popular. And those of you guys who have watched The Princess Bride probably remember him as the giant who was like trying to throw a rock at Wesley and then later on gets completely overwhelmed and is really funny and great in this movie. So anyway, he's a, a little piece of popular culture from the 80s that I think is good for us to know about. Okay, Jordan, what is your first argument against Shepherd Fairy? Um, so essentially it's, it's two things. Uh, one is the fact that you know, on our prof, we talked so much about finding your own reference and making sure that you shoot your own photos and, you know, learn to draw from life and those sorts of things. And he's not doing that. And not only is he not doing that, but he's not even giving credit to the people who he's taking the photographs from. And so it's sort of like if I were to take a random photo of a celebrity from Google and pay, and just trace over it, do a couple of cool graphics and, you know, try and make money off of it. There's something very dishonest to me about that. Um, the other thing is the fact that he's exploiting uh, street art and street culture to make a lot of money, uh, which in its which is meant to be a countercultural movement. And so when you when you take that away, um, it sort of it starts to change the entire dynamic of what this art is really about. All right. Well, let's talk about these photo references, Jordan, because I have some thoughts. The first thing is, what is Shepard Fairey going to do? Knock on Obama's door and say, hi, I'm an artist. Can I take a reference photo for my poster? You can't do that. I mean, if you want to make artwork that's political, that's dealing with current events and major figures, of course you're going to work from a photo reference. You can't blame him for using someone's photographic reference. And I think you can't deny the power that this Obama poster had on the campaign. I think we read somewhere that Obama actually personally thanked Shepard Ferry for the role that this poster played in that campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, even if, um, even if he couldn't get an actual photo, let's say you can't just walk up to the White House, you know, like you just said, um, there are other ways to create a likeness of somebody and not use someone's exact photo. Um, you could he could splice things together. Um, there's very, very often what I do is uh, I'll take one or two images or even more than that of someone maybe who's famous and I'll try and make up a brand new uh, photo. And Barack Obama is not someone who has like three photos on the Internet. He is, you know, one of the most recognizable people within the last, you know, 10, 15 years. And so that to me doesn't really hold a whole lot of weight. And. I think Obama really only thanked him just because he ended up getting elected. If he hadn't, I'm sure Obama would have been really pissed, <laughs> you know, and been like, hey, you know, I need, <laughs> you're, you're done for it. You're, just, you're getting sued. But the Again. thing is, <laughs> if you look at the Obama poster, okay, it's not like Shepard Ferry did a photorealistic pencil drawing of the original photograph that was shot of Obama. This is a heavily stylized manipulated version of Obama. And I think that's why this has such iconic staying power. Because first of all, look at the color scheme, okay? It is not an accident that it's red, white, and blue. And I think that the power in Shepard Fairey's work is in the simplicity, the bold shapes, they get the idea across. And for something like a political campaign, that's really, really important. Well, again, if the person who originally took the photo was offended by this, and he was offended by this, I feel like that that should sort of be taken into into the equation or considered. Because if someone were to take a photo that I had uh, that I had made or, or that I had taken, 
and use it for their own purposes and made all this money off of it. I mean, that's why we have copyright laws and things like that, so that these things won't happen. <laughs> and it, it can become very, uh, very difficult for people when they're trying to, uh, when they're just trying to, you know, take a simple picture. And who knows? I don't even know how much money Shepard Ferry made off of this Obama poster. But I feel like a huge part of that should have gone to the photographer um, if he didn't get it. Just be just because it is his photo, and yeah, you're stylizing it, but it's not like it's you're taking it from realis realism into like Family Guy or Simpsons kind of style. You know, it's it's still pretty realistic, even with the bold shapes and colors. The thing is, though, Shepard Ferry did not make this poster to make money. Okay, you can't accuse him of that because sure, there are certain things artists do gigs because they get paid. I'm pretty sure that he did this to help Obama's campaign. I, I don't think that he knew this was gonna blow up the way that it did. But I think those of us who are around during that campaign, we remember this image as such an image of positive change that I think for a lot of younger people, especially younger black people, it was a real moment, I think, in political history to see, oh my goodness, this is a person of color who is running for president. That was such a big deal at that moment. And I think Shepard Ferry really played a part in making that happen. Let's take a look at some of the comments in the chat. Albert is saying, any thoughts on white privilege in relation with graph design, hypnose, cultural appropriation of African Americanism? Jordan, what's your response to that? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> that is a really big question. Um, you know, there's a certain point where um, things become so popular that it's just become part of the culture, like rap music, for example. Uh, there, if this were 15, 20 years ago, or maybe even longer than that, you know, th that argument would be, the argument could be that, you know, you're appropriating the culture, but now it's become so popular that it almost, I, I feel like at a certain point, um, it just starts to uh, become over the top and it's hard to control. Uh, but I think a lot of it has to do with the intent. Uh, you know, and that comes from, you know, do you actually really love this culture? Do you actually love what this represents? Or are you tr simply using to try and get yourself famous or get yourself on TV or, you know, make a couple couple dollars off of it? Um, and sometimes that's hard to, uh, to see on the outside looking in. Uh, but in other times, it's not so much. I mean, my feeling in the context of this crit clash is that Shepard Ferry, okay, he's, he's a white male, but he is making images of people of color, people who are minorities, and it's not like he's selling throw pillows of these images, okay? Like, for example, we have these the series that he did in 2017 called We the People, okay? And these are all images of women of color, and he doesn't have to do this. I mean, he could choose to just go do whatever because in 2017, Shepard Ferry was famous and established enough. I'm sure money is not an issue for him at this point. And so there's no compelling reason for him to make artwork just for the money. He's really, I think, doing this to help with social change, to give visibility to people of color. And I think that that's really great as an artist. If he's in the position to be able to do that, then that's fantastic. I think that that's a really good way for him to use his position as a well-known artist in the U.S. Yeah, but however, uh, I think that, again, it goes back to uh, how is he actually creating this work? You know, with the Obama uh, post, for example, it was really just, hey, I'm going to take this guy's work and just manipulate a little bit. Like, honestly, if I had that mindset, I could do the exact same thing in about an hour or so. And, you know, and if I try to put that online, there might be a lot of people who are just like it because they're like, oh, that's cool. But for the person who I took that from, that could be really demeaning. And it, it could be a very, uh, what's the word? Uh, it could leave them very vulnerable. And so I, I feel uh, a certain burden to, to express that. And, I mean, it's hard to control people's emotions. You know, there, there are songs, for example, that are absolutely horrible. But some people find attachment to them and there's an emotional pull. Uh, you could say the same thing about any art form, you know, just because it's 
maybe you know, it looks cool or it sounds good or you know whatever the case may be it doesn't always necessarily mean it's morally correct all right we've got some great comments in the chat and Slepnir is saying it's too close to the original photo. There's not enough variation to change it. Ripple of Aqua says, I support both sides. It's such a gray area for artists to tread, to utilize what we see to the fullest potential, yet not step on other artists' work is very difficult. Slepnir is also saying, if he had collaboration or got permission from the photographer, it would not have been an issue. And Albert is saying, we both have good points. It's always hard because even though I'm Asian American, I grew up in the hip hop culture. So that's part of my mantra and much respect to its history. Yeah, it's very, very complicated, I think. But let's actually move on and take a look at this new series that Shepard Ferry just came out with. This just came out in an article in the New York Times, I think about a month ago or something. But you guys can see the title of it is Global Forefront. And you can see it's an obvious reference to all the healthcare workers right now who are working during the global pandemic. You can see there's text in the background. It says strength and service, strength to overcome. Again, here's Shepard Ferry stepping in at a crucial moment in history. Okay, before it was the Obama campaign. Before that, it was the people of color and minorities. And now we're seeing him being part of this global conversation about the pandemic. And so I see him as an artist who's very socially active and he's not just making pretty pictures. He's really calling attention to these people who are putting their lives literally on the line to care for all these people who have been um, become ill from the coronavirus. And I think what's not to like about that? Somebody who's really calling attention to critical issues. Yeah. So the thing about this, this poster is uh it's taking a lot of very strange like references to combine into something like you have like the Statue of Liberty arm and then it's but it's also like a very communist style poster and then you're taking the street art element and all these different things. Um, I, I feel like I don't want to say it's necessarily demeaning, but it feels like a, it feels gimmicky in a way. Um, and I know that that's his style, but I think the best artists are style chameleons, if you will, meaning that they can uh, adapt to uh, different styles in there and create different outcomes. And so I feel like that that's what's really happening with this. See, I disagree, Jordan, okay? Because <laughs> I you. think that you can't punish somebody for having a style. That's the whole point of being an artist. Artists are known throughout history for having a very distinctive style. You could say, okay, does it have beautiful chiaroscuro lighting and gorgeous flesh to die for? Is it an oil painting? Duh, of course, that's a Rembrandt painting. We all know that that's Rembrandt stick, right? Shepard Ferry is the same thing. He's like all these other artists where he is somebody who works with very bold, iconic colors. And I think that he's very tasteful about it because I'll tell you, there's a lot of artists who I think try to use iconography like the Statue of Liberty or for example, um, an American Eagle or the flag or something like that. And it comes across as so corny and bad. I mean, I'll tell you, I didn't notice the Statue of Liberty reference immediately. I mean, I definitely got it, trust me, I'm not that slow. But it's not so blatant that it looks really bad because I feel like for a lot of people, the Statue of Liberty, it's all about the big spikes. <laughs> on the crowd, right? Like once you see those spikes, you're like, okay, we know what we're talking about here. But the thing is, Ferry's more subtle about it. He only puts it in the arm and then the wing on the right-hand side becomes something else. So I think he does a great job of balancing all those elements. That's funny. I thought that I was like the first thing I saw was that flame. <laughs> well, wasn't that convenient for you then? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, I, I see what you're saying and, and in terms of like the graphics and everything and like the actual illustration it's I mean it's fine but again it really uh, I feel like we're running into that issue of just again being a bit gimmicky like um, he how do I put this I, f I still feel like there's the exploitation aspect going on and this this image that he's using is is uh, it still feels photo traced. It still feels uh, like something that 
I want to say it's half hearted necessarily, but it feels like he just plopped a couple things together and just like, all right, then we're going to have, you know, the same style I used from 15 years ago. And then we're going to have Liberty and then we're going to have Wings. Like, bam, that will automatically make people realize, you, you know, how much we need nurses and uh, those in the uh, who are working in hospitals taking care of the, you know, COVID-19 issue. You know, it just feels like, OK, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of thought into it. It feels like, you, you know how when you uh, write down your list of ideas for a new artwork, it feels like he took the first idea and just went with that and didn't come up with the other like seven or eight. Well, Jordan, as somebody who has done a lot of critique videos with you, <clears throat> I remember somebody saying that art was about the quick read, right? And if you don't get the quick read, that idea is not coming across, okay? Shepard Fairey is very good at the quick read. These are images that your average person who has very little interest in studying art history or the analysis and all that stuff can digest really easily. And that is such a hard thing to do as an artist. And I think he does it exceptionally well. I think he knows what types of shapes and colors people can understand. And that's very, very hard to pull off. I think that there's a lot of artists who really struggle with creating images that everybody on the planet can relate to. I think a lot of artists, it's like only a small percentage of the world can relate to it. But Shepard Ferry, he's like the artist for everybody. This is artwork for anybody who can see it and you can digest it right away. Let's see what's going on in the chat. That salty person says it's fine, he's a style, but there's a point where you have to question whether it works or not. Albert is saying public art needs an identifiable style, especially in the context of graphic design, or it becomes too intellectual, no one gets the message. So it might be cliche, but folks get the point. Exactly, Albert. I like these comments. Keep them coming. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Neil is saying, but how do you convey being genuine in an artwork? Okay, well, Jordan, how would you say Shepard Furry is maybe not being genuine? What are some signs of that in his work? Uh, for one, it's like the, I mean, it feels just like the Obama poster. It, it feels, and we know the history behind that. And it feels like um, the exact same, uh, it feels like the exact same uh, history goes into this image where it's like, oh, you know, we're in a, this, you know, having this big, crisis situation. All right, I'll just slap the same colors on because I used that 10 years ago and that seemed to work. And, uh, you know, I'll just have, you know, have someone lifting up the, the Liberty statue. Um, what is it? What would you call it? The torch. And yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, the torch. And, you know, that's going to be, it just feels like, and, and going back to what you said about uh, the quick read. Yes, it's about the quick read, but it's also, I feel like this is an opportunity to be uh, really clever. And I feel like with this piece, that's what we're, we're really missing. I mean, it's fine. It works. I mean, I get it, but I feel like there's something that I feel like it's almost too easy. You know, I feel like I'm not working for, uh, for my meal. You know what I mean? Builder D is saying, essentially, it's not a new one's concept. You're saying it's a routine for him. There's a difference between good style and routine style. Kate Myers is saying, I think the issue, sometimes hard to tell whether he is truly using his status to speak out for minorities and issues versus trying to play on these issues for the status. I mean, the thing is, okay, here's the thing. If he really just cared about the money, he probably would have stopped doing this content a long time ago. Okay, once you guys, once you have a show at the Smithsonian <laughs> as an artist, you're fine financially. It's not a problem. And so I have to say, there's got to be a reason that he's continuing to give spotlight to people and issues that matter. And it's got to come from something other than a financial reward at this stage, because he is somebody who is that well established. Looks like people are talking about photo tracing. Charlie Tapper is saying his quick photo trace stenciling is a deliberate choice that he's been open about, part of that punk history of art subcultures. The issue for me is there's no tension in the image. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, I think um, with this image that, you know, the, the global forefront, that that's, that's really accurate. And 
we're, I mean, think about it. we're in a global pandemic. That does not happen every, you know, two to three years. It's something that's very, very rare. And I feel like uh, the intensity of this piece is lost um, because, you know, there, there are people fighting for their lives, you know, like the nurses and the doctors. They're putting themselves on the line every single day to protect us. And that's not an easy situation. That's not, I don't think light blues and, you know, airy colors and, you know, cyans and all that stuff. I think, like, down in the trenches, like, almost, you know, almost war zone type of uh, situation. Um, I also wanted to address the money thing that you said. There's a lot of people who have a lot of money, like Bill Gates, for example. And you know what he still wants? More money. <laughs> but Bill Gates, <laughs> he's doing stuff. Unlike other rich people like Jeff Bezos, <laughs> where's his foundation? That's what I would like to know. Anyway, back to the artwork. We've got a comment from Recycle on Wednesdays. Speaking as an average person, I hate the nurse one. Looks like war propaganda to me. Lisa H. says, yep, agree. Here are the tanks. Salty Person says, but it's kind of like a war against COVID, like this whole battle thing against the disease. All right. Well, I can see all of that stuff, you guys. But the thing is, this is somebody who I think really has transcended and redefined who we think of as being an artist, okay? Because he really has done so much in a single career. I mean, how many artists can you say have graphic design skills, are people who are working as activists, somebody who's done large scale murals and has worked as a street artist? Like there really is something to be said about the way he has really leapt through so many different genres and yet really made a full-bodied career out of that. I mean, you can't deny Jordan how many different genres he's worked in and how incredibly unique that is as an artist. I mean, sure, but he still does the same thing after 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you got to give the guy some credit. I mean, it is pretty cool that he started with this little sticker campaign about Andre the Giant. I mean, it's such a strange, I think, That's, almost performance piece in a way. And then the fact that he's that, gone from that to these very large scale murals, he did the Hope poster. He's been a very prolific artist. And I think you cannot deny that. That's like saying a person who starts with a lemonade stand and becomes a giant businessman is always morally correct in everything that they do. <laughs> I didn't say he was morally correct. I said he was prolific. Prolific, whatever. But but the whole thing is like that that his work is is actually uh, successful on all uh, despite all the things that he's done, like taking other people's photos and traced and done all that stuff, and had used the same method over and over and over again. Let's see. Sebacchino says, I think political issues, what he deems political issues will always have weight artistically, but his work is entirely devoid of heart or reference to a wider narrative. And Kate Meyer says, I do dig the concept of sticker campaigns. And Sebacchino says, anyone can propose, quote, emotion, despite the medium. And Neil Espinoza says, I hate comparing the pandemic to war since the logic of wars is violence, and I think this time we should focus on healing, not that. I just dislike violence. Okay, wow, wow, we do not have, um, what's the word? Shallow conversations here at Art Prof, do we? We get really <laughs> deep, really fast. I love you guys. Okay, <laughs> let us know in the chat who you think won this crit clash. Was it Jordan, who's telling you that Shepard Ferry is the same thing over and over and over again? Or me saying, wow, he gave hope to a whole generation of young Black people who had never seen a person of color before in a political poster and then gave us this incredible historic moment. Hmm. Who do we think won this crit clash? <laughs> I mean, you know, notwithstanding my little additional commentary on that question. <laughs> Let's see. We also have a comment from Maria, who says, I think politics is what makes him as an artist. It's the voice he wants to express. He's not the only one. A lot of contemporary artists use art to give voice to a political view. Jordan, sorry, Clara. 
Oh, wait. I like you, 10,000 Crows. I think Prof Lee won this one. <laughs> Kate is saying close, but I think you're just saying that so I don't get mad at you, Kate. <laughs> Sebacino says, you both delivered good points. It's going to be hard. Haley says, Jordan. Salty person says, I think Clara's salty that she's been losing lately. Oh, my God. Somebody. Well, your name is Salty Person. So I guess we were warned about that in advance. (laughs) Neil is saying, Jordan, that our acting skills are getting better. Okay. (laughs) Cool. Let's see. Wen is saying, I arrived in time to see enough. I think Prof Lu won. Sorry, Jordan. Maria wants to see more visually different things from him, but I think he is not alone or the first to bring these ideas to art. Okay, let's see. I think it's Jordan, but I'm just going to give you guys a couple more seconds. Those of my silent fans who really need to jump in right the second are going to be mad at you forever. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Jordan, one, two, three, four... Wait, Damara Confronter says, I got here late, but Clara wins on the spiel I just heard. Ripple Vakwa says, I agree that Prof Lu's points about visual diversity, but Jordan had better overall points about his practical skill. Oh, and Damara says that she loves you. <laughs> Thank you, Damara. I appreciate it, even though you didn't, didn't vote for me. It's all good. <laughs> Wait a second. I have a couple more people jumping in. Cuban Year and Sydney are for me. Charlie Tapper is with Jordan. I like how you guys are so <laughs> apologetic. You're like, Jordan won. I Sorry. I, man, everyone's so apologetic to us. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, what did we do to deserve this little online community where people are so nice and respectful to each other? It's because they know if I lose, I'll just cry in the fetal position for four hours. I'm going to have to. I think it's Jordan. <laughs> okay. This is my last thing, guys. Let's try it one more time. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. One two, three. This is for Jordan. Uh, let's see. Four, five, six, seven. Guys, I can't lose again. I'm getting my butt kicked by all of my staff. (laughs) Now the question though, guys, okay, even though Jordan won this one, can you guys guess what we actually think about Shepard Fairey in real life? Because, you know, this is not just a crick clash. This is also an evaluation of my acting skills and Jordan's acting skills. So I guess what you're all going to have to do now is go hang out with us in the Art Prop Discord where we can reveal to you our true feelings about Shepard Fairey. Also, you guys can go hang out at artprof.org. Check out our freebies going on there. Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family because we're awesome. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. Thank you to all of you guys for your wonderful comments, great, deep, philosophical discussions that we all have here, which keeps me so inspired and excited. So in a few seconds, we're going to be in Discord. So thank you guys so much. We will see you next time. Please stay safe. Bye.